Today we talk about relationships and infertility. I'm Dr. Mark Amos, and this is Taco About Fertility Tuesday. So why did I pick to talk about relationships tonight? Relationships are stressful. But you know what else is stressful? Infertility. I can't tell you how many times I've seen couples come into my office and by the end of fertility treatment, they're talking about divorce. And keep in mind, very few people get divorced. But almost all couples go through stress in their relationship when they're dealing with infertility. Even personally, my wife and I went through problems when trying to get pregnant. Not the first time, not only the second time, but every time we struggled through IVF, we got stressed and it definitely affected our relationship. And the thing is, is that what I've learned over time is that it had nothing to do with one of us being mean or not caring or not trying hard enough. What it really came down to is that we didn't understand each other. And so today I want to talk about understanding infertility from the other person's perspective, both the men and female. Now, I understand not everyone fits in the box. This is not going to be for everyone, but this may be helpful for some of you. This may be something that opens up communication lines. And so I want to start by first talking about my story and with my wife. So my wife and I have been together since we've been 15 years old. And that entire time, inappropriately, we have been together. And there has been many times that we should have got pregnant, but we didn't. And we knew something was probably wrong because how come we never got pregnant for all these years? But eventually we finally went to go get help. And I was at the hospital and I thought, let me do a semen analysis just to make sure there's nothing wrong. And I remember getting the results and seeing them and they were so severe. I was devastated. I was also embarrassed. Here it is, something so simple. I mean, in the big picture, as men, we don't have to do much. We just have to give a sample. And here's something I couldn't even do. See, the thing is, my wife and I wanted to be parents more than anything. I remember when we got married, one of the things I discussed with my wife is how important it was for me to be a dad and how I wanted one of us to be home with our kids I always knew I wanted to be a parent. So this wasn't just, oh, we're going to have troubles. I was already a obstetrical and gynecological resident. So I knew what it meant. It meant that we weren't getting pregnant without help. As a male, some of the frustrating parts were, were first, there was nothing I could do. I mean, all my parts worked, but how do I control this? And it's frustrating because as guys... We don't like to be unsuccessful. Additionally, I want to have a child with my wife. And here it is. I can't help her have a child, which means I know I'm going to be causing her sadness because of something I can't do. I remember that day when I came home. I didn't say anything to my wife. And eventually I did. Because she realized something was wrong. And I explained. And we were both very sad. It, it, it crushed us. Now we're years later now. And, and I don't have that same feeling of failure. After we've had time to talk. And discuss things. And my wife ended up having some issues too. But in reality if I didn't have my issues. My wife could get pregnant easily. It's just when we look at IVF. It shows her problems more. 
But in reality, I still do to this day feel kind of inferior that I wasn't able to get her pregnant naturally. Now, I don't say this to make anyone feel sorry for me or that I'm trying to open up my feelings. I'm telling you this because you would probably never know this about me. I talk about my sperm counts being low. I make jokes about it. My friends make jokes about it. And it doesn't bug me at all. Yet even now, I still have that little bit of me that goes, I wish I could have done that. I wish I could have done it without help. And I'm thankful that I live at a time where we can be helped. I'm so thankful for my family. But the point is, if someone like myself who laughs at it, who can joke about it and literally announce it to the world, then it's probably possible that your partner also has some of these feelings. Infertility is one of the greater stressors in life, usually for females more than males. In one study of 200 people, 50% of the women said it was the most upsetting moment in their life when they found out they were infertile. Yet only 15% of the males did. Now, does that mean men don't care as much as women? No. Matter of fact, I think what it is is that men have never thought about being a parent until they've been a parent. Not sure there's some who think about it like my, I did, but most guys want to have a kid because their wife wants to have a kid. But once they have kids, they're extremely excited. Matter of fact, I remember when my wife was pregnant, even though I wanted to have kids more than anything, my wife was the most important thing in my life. To the point that I've always said, if anything comes down to her or the babies, it is her and not the babies. I would rather lose my children than lose my wife. But that was before I had kids. See, I never met my kids. I never held a doll. I never pretended to be a dad. I just knew I wanted to be a dad with this woman. But at this point, she is the most important thing in my life. But after I had my kids, my view has changed dramatically. When we got pregnant the second time, it was absolutely the kids first before my wife, which she agreed with. It had nothing to do that I don't love my wife. I love my wife just as much, but I got a taste. I got a taste of what it's like to have something love you so much that you don't even know what to do. As men, we don't get it. It doesn't make sense to us why women could be so upset about something such as not being able to get pregnant. I mean, you have each other. And remember, for guys, you're the most important thing. But see, men, you've never played with dolls. You've never pretended to be a mom. You know, I watched my daughters growing up, and it's amazing seeing them just nurture babies, want to help people. It's what makes us different than women. Women are more nurturing, and not only are they more nurturing, but they've actually gone through the steps in life being told they're going to be a mom. They're going to have a family. And so they're almost raised to be prepared for this. So imagine the expectations your entire life. You've been told you're going to be a mom. You're going to have this baby. You're going to produce this baby. It starts to become the most important thing you're supposed to do in your life. And then one day it comes up and you find out you can't get pregnant. Now, to us, we look at it as like, okay, there's a problem. We can fix it. But to them, they feel like they just let you down because that was actually their job in the relationship. Regardless if it's the woman's issue or if it's the male issue, women still have stress if they're not able to get pregnant because they also have a timeline. See, guys, they can go their whole life, still make sperm, but women do not have that ability. 
So it's not only now that they can't get pregnant, but they have a smaller time frame to get pregnant. And as guys, we don't appreciate this. We don't understand that you feel this is something you were supposed to provide and that you're letting the relationship down. Matter of fact, in some cultures, I've had women ask me if we can put a baby in them and just say it was his because they're so afraid of letting the man know that they can't have a baby. Now, obviously, that's a very extreme example, but it still comes back to the point. If your entire life you were raised and told that you are the one carrying a baby, that you are the one bringing this life into the family, then all the pressure is on you. And when you can't do that, it is immensely stressful. Now, don't think guys aren't stressed too. I mean, as I told you my story, I was definitely stressed. And a matter of fact, we find that when the fertility problem is with the men, there's a higher chance they're going to be more stressed. But in reality, what most guys are frustrated by is that they can't do anything, even when it's not their problem. It, it doesn't make sense to women, but for men, it is extremely, extremely frustrating when you have to rely on someone else to get something done. No guy ever comes to my office and thinks, I'm really glad we brought another guy to help us have a baby. It sucks. And now they have to basically give in that someone else needs to help them have a kid. And for a man, it's frustrating because one, he can't fix it. And that's what he wants to do. He wants to help you more than anything. And he can't. Now, in your mind, you're thinking, well, he can support me. But the thing is, this is where most of the issue occurs. Because men and women think completely different. The weird thing with men is that when we get stressed, we react a lot different than women. We seem to withdraw from the situation. We get very focused and become more silent. Now, if my wife sees that, she's going to think, well, he doesn't care. Why does he ever talk about this? Why does he always just go do something and get focused on playing a video game or something? But in reality, he cares a bunch. That's the reason why he's so withdrawn. He's trying to figure things out because that's what guys do. They want to fix things. They want to figure it out. Now, on the other hand, women do not withdraw from the situation. Instead, they want to talk about it. They feel overwhelmed, but they want to be emotionally involved in the situation and want to talk about their problems. But for us, that, that becomes almost a tension. We don't want to talk about it. Matter of fact, we'll talk about it when we're ready to talk about it. But you're ready to talk about it now. And we're not ready to talk about it now. And neither of us know that. So now we're frustrated because we have to hear about it and we're not ready to hear about it because we're thinking of all the other stressors such as, you know, I can't make her happy because now she can't have a kid. How much is it going to cost us? I don't even know where we have enough money. She's thinking, why does he not care about this? I can't have a kid. This is the most important thing in my life and he doesn't even care. Can you really put a dollar amount on a family? Does he really even want a family now? Is he the right guy for me? Does he know how much I want a kid? And the simple answer is no. He doesn't know how much you want a kid because he has never thought about being a parent like you have. He has never pretended to be a parent. He has never dressed up a doll because that's just not the way he was raised. And in some ways, a perspective for women to see is that men become extremely depressed and low self-esteem when they lose a job or if they're not bringing in enough money. 
And the thing is, is you're happy. You're together with him. Who cares? Because you're together. But see, you've never been raised where you were told the, your whole life that you are going to bring home the bacon, that you are going to support your family, that that's your number one job. Matter of fact, the reason men build this work ethic is because they've been trained this way. And many men even commit suicide because they lose a job. It is so important to their self-esteem. Yet for a woman, it's almost unthinkable. Why would anyone kill themselves just for losing a job? It doesn't make any sense. What expectation did you have in life that would make you feel you're worthless because you don't have a job? Get another job. What's the big deal? That's because we all have different expectations in life. Almost everything in our life that leads to stress is due to an expectation that we had. And why wouldn't you have an expectation? I mean, who thinks that, oh yeah, we'll probably get married and then, you know, we're going to probably have kids and, you know, we'll probably need to see a fertility doctor. No, no one's going to think like that because that's not a normal situation. For 85% of the world, when they want to have a baby, they put on the movie Chocolate, have a little wine, and make a baby. But for the other 15%, which includes myself, we need help. And that doesn't fit our expectation that we grew up with. I don't expect this podcast to be the resolution in your relationship. Matter of fact, I don't expect you to get anything out of this with regards to fixing a relationship. My, my point of doing this podcast was to make sure that everyone realizes this is normal. You're not the only couple who's being stressed out. You're not the only couple who thought, isn't it weird that we don't even like having sex just to try to make a baby? A lot of people feel that way when it no longer is about enjoyment and love but it's about just trying to make a baby and it's not happening. I want people to realize that maybe it's not their spouse that is the issue. Maybe it's the fact that they're talking two languages and that they don't realize they both want the same goals, but the way they respond is different. And what you really need is you need a counselor. I know a lot of people look at counselors and think, That's so weak. We don't need that. We're stronger than that. But you're not seeing a counselor to make your relationship better. You're not seeing the counselor to prevent divorce because you guys aren't compatible and they're going to make you compatible. Absolutely not. If you guys shouldn't be together, you're going to get divorced. What they're going to do is open up communication lines so you can start understanding things that you didn't understand before. So then you won't have a divorce or won't hurt your relationship for something that's not really there. You just thought it was there. I think one of the biggest epiphanies I ever had in my life was reading the book, Men Are From Mars, Women Are From Venus. The day I read that book, I realized I never understood women. I changed everything after reading that book. I started understanding that when women look at a situation and see something, in their head, they go, well, if I did that, it must have been for this reason, so that must be why they're doing it. So then I was able to realize that when I do stuff, I have to take a second to think, how could she interpret what I'm doing as? And so it's allowed me sometimes to get myself out of trouble when I realized I did something and then I turned around and said, wait, do you think I'm doing this because of that? And she goes, yes. And I go, no, that's not what I'm doing. She goes, okay, good. I'm glad you clarified. See, if I didn't clarify, I was probably gonna be dead. But I clarified it because it opened up my mind to understanding that. Additionally, my wife learned about me. She understood that sometimes I'm stressed about something and I don't wanna talk about it. And instead of 
making me talk about it when I don't want to talk about it. She gives me space. She knows I'm going to do something stupid just to get my mind off of it. But eventually when I'm ready, the only person I'm going to talk to is her. One of my favorite examples with my wife and I of misunderstanding each other as couples is when my wife started talking about the Christmas tree at New Direction Fertility Centers. It's a large tree. It's 12 foot tall. It's pretty wide. And so we were home one day and she says to me, yeah, that Christmas tree, it looks really narrow. And I said to her, no, 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 it, it's just really tall. So it looks really narrow. It's actually pretty wide. I told her it's like almost six feet. Now I know what you're thinking. You're saying, okay, this doesn't seem like a story at all. What, where's Dr. Amos going with this? I mean, how does this relate to women and men getting in arguments and relationship? And from my perspective, I agree with you. This seems like such a benign story. Well, if you thought that, you are definitely wrong. See, me being the man, I was being analytical. I was fixing the conversation. She thought it was narrow. And I was just explaining to her that the illusion of it being narrow was there. But in reality, it was actually wide. Now, Here's where it takes a very strange turn. And for women, you're going to understand this. But for guys, we're still confused. See, the thing is, is I'm six foot two. And my wife, she's five foot tall on a good day. Now, in her mind, she's thinking, okay, is he saying I'm fat? Now, before she says this, I made another example and said, hey, you know, like in our house, our doors look really skinny because we have nine foot doors. But in reality, they're, they're normal width doors. So my wife turns to me and says, so what, you think I'm fat? Now, the right response should have been, no, sweetie, I apologize. I didn't mean to. I did. But see, I didn't do that. Instead, I said, what? Why would you think I mean you're fat? And then she says to me, well, you're tall and look thin and I'm short. So does that mean I look fat? Now, don't take my advice here. But then I said, I don't know why you're worried about your butt. You're not fat. And then she says to me, I wasn't worried about my butt, but maybe I should be. So now I'm confused and I say, well, what were you worried about? And she said, my stomach. And I said, but that's protrusion. We were talking about width. That's when I got the eye that I knew if I didn't shut up, I was going to be dead. So I kept quiet. But this is a perfect example of how something as goofy as a tree width became a little bit of an argument. And we love each other. I mean, nothing came of it. But the point is, as a guy, honestly, would you ever think that saying a tree is wide would make your spouse think that they're overweight. And this is why you have to always remember that you cannot assume that she's specifically mad at you, but that she sees the situation different from you. She sees your responses different. and. For women, it's important when you're looking at your spouse to understand that their perspective may be different. That maybe they're really just talking about a tree and talking about the tall doors, that it has nothing to do with you. See, over these years, I finally understood now that when my wife asked me how was work today, I used to think she meant what did I do at work? How was work? And what I really realize she means now is, did my day go well? And do I want to know about her day? And here's the thing. Honestly, sometimes I don't. I just want to go home and get something done. But I realize it's important to her. So I ask her, it went fine. Same day. 
how did your day go? And that little thing there will help my relationship more than in my mind thinking she must be so proud of me. I worked hard all day. See, again, another view that we may not appreciate as guys is that we think when we're at work all day and we're working that we should be getting some credit for this. And we get a little, they're appreciative. But if you come home from work and you're so exhausted that you don't have time to give her any attention, then the work isn't that good. Matter of fact, it's actually detrimental. Now, this again creates a struggle because for us as men, this is part of what makes us men. We're supposed to work hard. We're supposed to bring home money. We're supposed to support the family. And yet, in her mind, part of being married was talking, was being able to talk about each other's day when you get home. And so if that interrupts that, work is now bad, yet for you, work is good. You have to remember, we both see in different perspectives. And if you can't find a way to communicate This is where counselors come into play. Before we end, I just want to talk about two things. And that is, first, I also think women tend to blame themselves more than men. And I mean that because whenever women come in my office, it's like they always assume they're the cause of infertility. Even though there's a 50% chance it could be just as much him as it is her, they always blame themselves. Matter of fact, I had a patient, not just once, but many times, where she's had three kids before, he's had three kids before, and then they sit down and she goes, oh, I know it's me. I said, what, why, why do you know it's you? And she says, well, because he's had a kid before. And, and then I look at her and I said, but you've had kids before. See, this is what's so unique about men and women. Women are so loving they're willing to even take the blame before there's blame. Now, men, we don't want it to be us. Matter of fact, most women don't realize we're scared to death that's us. We don't want me to tell that our pistol can't shoot bullets. But we also assume it's not us because we never take blame. Matter of fact, that's what's so great sometimes about being a guy is that you can just go, oh, not my fault. And we don't move, miss a beat. Whereas women, you would constantly feel stressed out about, is it my fault? Did I do it? And yet we're like, yeah, definitely not us. And what's interesting is, is that even the situation where she's had three kids and he's had three kids, she assumed it's his problem. And as a matter of fact, many men won't even come in for semen now. So they're so afraid to find out and they know it probably isn't them, but in reality, 50% of the time it is. Just keep in mind That again, this podcast is not going to save a marriage. This podcast is not going to change much in your relationship. But what it should do is hopefully, if you both can listen to this, open up communication lines, take away the fear that maybe it's not just unique to you, that there's nothing wrong with your relationship. Everyone's relationship deals with this. And that if you need help, it's normal to use a counselor. I want to finish this with this last story. I think this last story exemplifies how men and women are different. And this should be the nail in the coffin that makes you go, okay, we can't be stressing each other anymore for fertility because we are definitely different. And so the story is about this gentleman who's an older guy, but when he was younger, he got married. And after they got married, his wife one night woke up in the middle of the night and found him making a sandwich. And what he'd do is he'd take out the food, make the sandwich. And every night, early in the morning, he did this. And he's been doing this for many, many years. Now, his wife, wanting to be part of that, started waking up with him. And so every night they would wake up, they would make the sandwich, and then he would cut the crust off of the sandwich. And then he would give her the crust and he would eat the sandwich. And this went on for 20 years. And then one day, 
this whole time she keeps thinking, why does he keep giving me the crust? I mean, here it is. I wake up with him every day and I eat the sandwich with him. And yet he constantly gives me the crust. And so she gets brave and says to him, I've been waking up with you for the last 20 years and I enjoy it. But every time we meet and eat the sandwich, you give me the crust. Why do you always give me the crust? And with almost tears in his eyes, he turns to her and says, because that's my favorite part. We see the world different. Stress in relationships is rarely about something wrong with the relationship and more about communication. I hope this podcast was helpful to some of you. And if it wasn't, maybe you got a good laugh. As always, I greatly appreciate everyone's reviews. I appreciate getting the word out about us. And I look forward to talking to you next week. Until next week, this is Taco About Fertility Tuesday.